A new analysis finds plastic gets deposited in your arterial plaque and increases your risk for developing fatal cardiovascular related events, including strokes and heart attacks. The analysis that we're going to talk about today was published recently in the New England Journal of Medicine. The title of this article is Microplastics and Nanoplastics in Atheromas and Cardiovascular Events. And I think this is just a really fascinating study. Uh, here's the, the study right here. We're really going to dive into this today because there's a adage in toxicology. And a lot of people talk about how the dose makes the poison. And this may have been true in the context of lead, arsenic, cadmium, mercury. These are heavy metals that are found in drinking water uh, and environmental pollutants and things like that. But when it comes to microplastics, the dose doesn't necessarily make the poison because it turns out that microplastics, we're getting these in very, very, very small amounts as the name implies microplastics. We're getting picogram amounts in food packaging, in our water, various food products. It's found even in breast milk now, unfortunately. Microplastics cross into the placenta, affect the developing baby. And so for a lot of years in toxicology and people will say it's microplastics, it's nanoplastics, don't worry about it, it's no big deal. The dose makes the poison. But that is usually studied in isolation. And so they have these LD50 studies. You know, what is the lethal dose of lead to kill a mouse, let's just say. But the the difference here in the real world is we're exposed to all sorts of, you know, toxic elements and microplastics and, uh, you know, environmental pollutants and even, you know, pharmaceutical drugs in our drinking water. Like we're getting these things in a complex array. And so that's never actually been studied. So to say the dose makes the poison, that's really like a 1950s model of toxicology. And so it turns out that it's not the dose that makes the poison. It's, these things are everywhere. And sadly, they now get, depo we're finding, get deposited in our plaque, hardening the plaque. And we hear a lot about beta amyloid in the brain. What if that was just microplastic deposition in the brain, increasing the risk of developing dementia, Alzheimer's, and much more? I think it's just really something to start to consider. And I know when we talk about avoiding uh, drinking hot water in, say, uh, disposable coffee cups or having takeout in styrofoam containers, people say, well, don't do that uh, or, or don't worry about that. That's not that big of a deal. I really do think it's a big deal because, again, we're getting this stuff everywhere. If you've ever done any plumbing on your apartment, your condo, your house, all of your piping that you get your drinking water that you shower in is plastic. And it turns out that polyvinyl chloride PVC was found in arterial plaque samples from these patients that were going in and getting a, a routine procedure called a carotid endoarterioarectomy. And it turns out that these uh, individuals had higher risk of developing a stroke, and so they were getting some plaque removed from the carotid artery. And the investigators thought, well, this would be a great sample to track and, and look at and follow for almost three years to see if the presence of microplastic in that plaque from the carotid artery was linked with poor outcomes down the road some 34 months later. And it turned out that people who had higher levels of microplastics in their carotid artery plaque had a higher risk of developing fatal uh, cardiovascular related events and strokes. And so we're going to continue to dive in to today's show, friends. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the comments section below and what you're doing to avoid exposures to microplastics and to help get rid of them in your body. And one of my favorite tools to help to get rid of all sorts of compounds, whether it's arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury, as well as microplastics is sauna. Sauna therapy sweating is a phenomenal tool. And today's show sponsor, Bond Charge, makes one of the hottest yet lowest EMF sauna blankets on the market. What's unique about this sauna blanket is it gets up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which is much hotter than most of the sauna blankets on the market. It has a very small form factor. So if you live in a studio, a condo, or an apartment, you can roll this out and start benefiting from all of the many health benefits that are ascribed to sauna therapy, including sweating, mimicking the effect of exercise, improving circulation, and most relevant to today's conversation, detoxifying, because the blood, urine, sweat study found that just hot yoga or sweating is a phenomenal way to excrete these heavy metals and microplastics and other environmental pollutants from your body. So if you're not yet harnessing the benefits of sauna and sauna therapy, please check out our show sponsor, bondcharge.com for slash HIH and save on this amazing at-home sauna blanket. Again, the hottest yet lowest EMF sauna blanket on the market. I'll I'll put links in the description below. So going on with this study, again, I think it's just 
really important. This is the first study of its kind. And it was pretty impressive that this was published in New England Journal of Medicine of all places, because that's a very mainstream journal. But I think it's good that this is a high impact journal. And what's even better is a lot of mainstream news sources actually picked up this story. This was forwarded to me by family members and extended family members who aren't people that necessarily care about plastic. But when a study like this comes out, they're scratching their head and going, Hmm, maybe I should not be drinking water out of plastic bottles anymore. Maybe I should be, you know, a little bit more vigilant about my food packaging. Maybe that morning Starbucks hot coffee in the plastic, you know, cup. Many of you have gotten hot coffee out in public. I like to get coffee as well. I, I always recommend the For Here mug because it's not going to leach plastics and microplastics into your coffee. Okay, so what are the details of the study that we should care about. A total of 304 participants were enrolled in the study, 257 completed, a mean follow-up period of 33.7 months. Polyethylene was detected in carotid artery plaque of, in 150 patients. About 58% of the patients had some sort of plastic in their plaque, with a mean level of 21.7 micrograms per milligram of plaque. 31 patients, or 12% of patients, also had measurable amounts of PVC in their plaque. So about one in 10 of the patients had PVC, literally piping material in their plaque. Now, I don't need to tell you, PVC pipes are hard, they're not bendable. And this is what we do not want in our arteries. We've all heard about endothelial dysfunction or the stiffening and the loss of uh, pliability in our arterial system. And we know that ED, endothelial dysfunction, is linked with erectile dysfunction. We know erectile dysfunction is on the rise. More young men now have erectile dysfunction than at any other time in history. And it's not really surprising. You see young people going to Starbucks, they're drinking out of soda, drinking soda out of plastic bottles, drinking plastic out of plastic bottles, eating processed food. About 68% of the calories that young people consume come from ultra processed food. And the packaging of that is, lest I remind you, plastic. It's probably off gassing in the food. So young people are getting this everywhere. And that's problematic. Okay, now what's even more interesting are these images that I'll share with you on the screen right now. The electron microscopy revealed visible jagged edge foreign particles among plaque macrophages and scattered in the external debris. Radiographic examination showed that some of these particles include chlorine. Patients in whom microplastic particles were detected within the atheroma were at higher risk for primary endpoint events than those in whom these substances were not detected. And so this was a 4.5 hazard ratio. So the odds of having an event are 4.5 times greater in people who have the presence of microplastic in their plaque compared to people who don't. Now, there's a lot of unknowns from this study. We don't really know, is there a certain genotype or metabolic phenotype that contributes or helps foster the deposition of microplastic in the plaque? You know, could it be that some people are more susceptible uh, to developing or storing or depositing these microplastics in their plaque? Or is it an exposure effect? I mean, there's a lot of unknowns here, but I think, again, we should exercise caution, you know, when in doubt, exercise caution, and we all need to minimize our exposure to this stuff and enhance the elimination of this through sweating, through exercise, through sauna therapy, and much more. In conclusion, uh, in this study, patients with carotid artery plaque in which the microplastic and nanoplastics were detected had a higher risk of composite myocardial infarction stroke or death from any cause at 34 months of follow-up compared to those in which microplastics and nanoplastics were not detected. In this study, patients with microplastics in their excised plaques were 4.5 times as likely to have experienced a stroke, non-fatal heart attack, or died from any cause after 34 months than people who did not have detectable microplastics in their plaques that surgeons had removed. So as you can see from this graph here in the primary endpoint events, about 20% of the patients that had high amounts of microplastics in their plaque had some sort of event. In contrast, less than 10% of patients who did not have plaque in their carotid arteries uh, had an event. And this shows the hazard ratio is 4.53, which uh, is quite high. And so the take home here is 
over time, having microplastics deposited in your arterial plaque is, is a strong indicator that you might suffer from a future cardiovascular related event. Now, again, here's the electron microscopy images showing the jagged plastic particles containing both PVC and polyethylene. I'll share with you shortly where these plastics are found and how to avoid them. But uh, this is found in the carotid arteries and logic would suggest it's probably also in the highly sensitive and very small coronary arteries as well because as I just mentioned to you, having higher levels of this microplastic in the carotid arteries are linked also with coronary artery occlusion related events such as a heart attack. So this stuff is probably being deposited everywhere, even in erectile tissue, I would speculate. So what is polyethylene and PVC? Well, it turns out that polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride or PVC in their various forms are used in a wide range of applications, including the production of food, cosmetic containers, and as I mentioned earlier, water pipes. Uh, microplastic and nanoplastic particles have been found in drinking water, in a large range of foods, cosmetic products, and air. They're also found bound to fine and hellable particulate matter with an aerodynamic diameter less than 2.5 micrometers. Uh, and it's transported long distances by wind which is pretty incredible. So this stuff is found in disposable face masks that everyone wanted to wear for years at a time. And some people are still wearing these masks in Seattle, Washington. I mean, I just was at a coffee shop the other day and uh, people have been, been wearing these for a long time. We inhale this stuff into our lungs from masks, from wind. Uh, it's in our drinking water, our food, it's everywhere. So this is why I think if we have this mantra that the dose makes the poison and we think, oh, it's just a small amount from a face mask. It's a small amount from a plastic water bottle. It's a small amount from fast food packaging. If we have that mindset, we're going to be just totally inundated with this stuff and it's found in our fat cells. It's everywhere and it obviously gets deposited in the body, in the carotid artery plaque, presumably in the coronary artery plaque and possibly in the brain as well. And essentially, this is bad news bears. And the investigators write, other studies have suggested that polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride were also the most abundant microplastic and nanoplastic particles found in human breast milk and urine with polyethylene fibers observed in human lung tissue at a concentration of one particle per gram of tissue. The presence of polyvinyl chloride has also been shown in a consistent number of liver samples obtained from patients with cirrhotic liver disease. So, the take-home message, my friends, is we need to be vigilant about this. That's the bottom line. And so please do your best efforts to uh, minimize exposure, particularly with hot food wrapped in plastic. Uh, don't stick like a Pop-Tart in the microwave and ordering out at fast food restaurants. I mean, all the, the slick lining of the food that you get in fast food packaging and, and processed food packaging is bad news. And drinking out of plastic water uh, bottles is not good. So Really important to recognize that we now have data to show that microplastics are causing a problem. And lest I remind you, about 630,000 people here in the U.S. alone die from stroke or a heart attack uh, every single year. And so it turns out that, uh, that these microplastics could be one of the many factors increasing your risk of developing uh, a stroke or a heart attack. So I appreciate you tuning all the way through. Hopefully you found this show helpful. I will put links to the resources and this actual full text PDF from the New England Journal of Medicine in the description below, and we'll catch you on a future episode down the road.